Welcome to Chandler and Focus. I'm Councilmember Rick Eumann. Today we're discussing early literacy efforts through Read on Chandler and the Chandler Library. So first let me welcome my two guests, Joanne Floth, Director of Read on Chandler, and Bob Rice, Chandler Unified School District Board Member and Executive Board Member for Read on Chandler. So thank you guys for coming today. Let's start by sharing your backgrounds a little bit. Joanne, you want to start? And well, I've been a teacher for many, many years. Um, started out actually as a high school Spanish teacher and kept moving on down until I hit preschool and knew I loved that. And uh, so I taught preschool for many years and became director of child care programs. Um, spent several years doing that. And then I moved to the community college and taught adults in early childhood education and uh, loved doing that. Loved working with families and, and caregivers and, and uh young children, and then I began working for First Things First, which is a new state agency for early childhood education. Cool, very cool. Bob, how about you? Well, I was an Intel manager for about 23 years, uh, then elected to the Chandler School Board in 2002, uh, been on the board since then, uh, and also on the YMCA, uh, Chandler Gilbert YMCA board in the past 30 years. Wow, cool. Birth to Five is probably one of the most crucial years for early literacy development. You know, why is early literacy important, Joanne? Well, we know that early literacy and a strong foundation in vocabulary and language is um, really strong predictors of student success when children get to school. And we also know that the job of getting children ready for school starts when they are born at, at birth. Uh, and so we know that the years from zero to four are the prime years for getting children's brains ready to succeed in school. Um, those are really, really important time for children as, as a lot of the wiring that happens in the brain is happening at that time. And um, when children are spoken to and read to, um, doesn't really matter what language they're spoken to or read to, but when they are, when this is happening, um, children form those really strong bonds in their brains, that wiring happens, and when they get to school, then they're ready to learn how to read. Um, parents and caregivers that are talking and reading to young children um, is really the best way to prepare children to succeed in school. We can try to give them academics. We can try to give them um, all those uh, ABCs and one, two, threes. But really the most important thing is that they have a strong vocabulary and they have a strong language when they get to school. Um, children who don't enter kindergarten with those needed skills are often... Uh, always playing catch up. And chances are when they start school behind, they're gonna stay in school behind. And um, that's just not acceptable for Chandler's children. Cool. Bob, you know, Read on Chandler was formed, um, why? Well, when we uh, looked at what was going on in the schools, it probably began with uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the legislature passed a, a law that said all children had to be reading by third grade or they couldn't progress. And then we looked at some of the, some of the areas we have in Chandler's, Chandler and found that 70% of the, the children, when they came into kindergarten, weren't prepared at the literacy level that we, we'd like to see them. Um, and, and there were specific geographic areas that we wanted to target. So uh, the idea was uh, using uh, some partnerships uh, in early literacy to, to help get those kids uh, a little bit better prepared as they enter kindergarten. What is the mission? I guess you know, and, you know, it's, and is it unique to what's going on currently, or what's you know? I guess for both of you guys, what do you see as the mission for Read on Chandler? Well, we really want to see all of our children when they come to school that they are ready to succeed. Um, we have some statistics from our school saying that um, about sixty-four, between sixty-four and seventy percent of the children who do come to certain schools in Chandler are not prepared. And we want to turn that around and make sure that um, at least 70% of children who come to schools in Chandler are ready to, to succeed in school. Okay. And how about you, Bob? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I would agree. And we have a lot of resources in Chandler already. I mean, we're very fortunate. A lot of organizations that are uh, really helping to work with kids and uh, young kids at that age. But even despite all those great resources, we're, we still have the fact that only 30% uh, or so come prepared. So we felt it was important to try to focus and target those resources better 
uh, develop some clear metrics uh, so that we could use to determine our success. Rather than just put another program in place, let's make sure that it's targeted to the areas what, that really uh, will be needed the most. You know, and the big thing with people have to understand, and we're gonna talk more about it later in our show, is that we have great programs in Chandler, and I guess part of Read on Chandler is our, the mission of the group is to really connect those dots, so to speak, and you know, our library has great programs. There's lots of things out there that a lot of parents don't know about, and some don't take advantage of for whatever reason. So I think it's really important um, as the, the mission of really not trying to reinvent the wheel as much as really trying to connect the dots a little bit. Valley of the Sun United Way is, is currently doing a literacy scan uh, for, the, for the group. Explain, Joanne, what the information is gonna be gathered and you know, what we'll be able to be provided out of that. Well, Valley of the Sun United Way is a great partner in our organization, and um, they've had a lot of experience in working in Chandler, not only with their school readiness kits, but also reading to children and providing books for children in, in kindergarten and first grade classes. And they came to us and, and offered to do a literacy scan that would look over the community and find what the resources are out there for literacy activities. And um, first and foremost, also talk to parents and find out what their needs are in this respect. Um, we want to provide all of those resources that we can for parents, and we want to find out what the barriers are that parents may have. We know, we think we know some of them. Um, some may be transportation or um, learning English at the time and, and not feeling competent to, to read to their children. Um, but Valley of the Sun is going to work really hard with with parents, with our partners, with other agencies that, that work with um, young children and their families, and show us where those resources are, and then most importantly, where the gaps are, and um, give us some ideas about how to fill some of those gaps. And as that information comes out, how are we gonna be able to use that? Well, it's going to tell us what, um, first of all, where we need to focus our efforts on. It's going to help our partners understand um, which programs that they're, they're currently doing are working, which ones that they possibly could expand and do more of. Um, we have some pockets within the city that we know we need to dig a little deeper and get to those families and make sure that they feel comfortable coming to the library or coming to a family resource center or um, to any of the social service agencies and get the help that they need. What, what are some of the programs? I know you, you and Bob, there are, there are a lot of programs out there. And I think this literacy scan is gonna really try and connect the dots and find people that I didn't know this was there and all those kinds of different things. But what are some of the programs and resources that we have either through your old organization, First Things First, or Bob through the schools? Um, you guys wanna talk a little bit about that? Well, we know that um, as you said earlier, we have a lot of resources in our community. We have two family resource centers, the Chandler Christian Community Center and the Care Center, and they provide wonderful programs for families, um, and especially for young, uh, young families and young children. Um, they have Raising a Reader program and Giggles, Squiggles, and Squirms. That is a program that came out of the Chandler schools. Um, we also know that the, even at our healthcare facilities that we have a program called Reach Out and Read where uh, when children come for their well child visits, the doctor will sit down and read a book to them and model those good practices for parents and talk to them about the importance of reading um, to their children. Um, we know that the schools are providing great preschools in our program. First things first is um, providing some funding for parent education programs and for home visitation services. Um, they're also working with a program that improves the quality of childcare within the community. Um, so we know we have a lot of resources. We just feel like our mission is, is, is that connector. We wanna be the people that make those connections. Mm -hmm. um, we often hear from parents that um, they know there's resources out there, but they just don't know where to go. Or at the time, they're not sure which one would be the most appropriate. So we feel like that's one of the things is Read on Chandler that we can provide for the community. Okay. Bob, what other? Oh, well, and it's uh, also we know that only about 30% of children actually uh, attend a preschool. Uh, it, it can be very expensive, 300 to 500 or 600 dollars a month just to attend, and some families just can't afford that. Um, so this, this uh, we hope, uh, as Joanne said, really connect some of the programs together, find out where the gaps are, 
And we know there's a lot of uh, parents and families out there that, that just aren't connected to anything. And our, one of our key goals will be to kind of get to those parents and families and find those uh, that we can provide some services to uh, provide some early literacy uh, materials and, and perhaps even starting, um, you know, with the, uh, with the hospitals, you know, as they come home with their new baby, uh, providing some information at that point. Uh, it's really a, it's not a short-term uh, project. It's really a, a long-term uh, program to, to get the kids uh, and parents really primarily to understand what they need to be doing with their kids to help them get ready for kindergarten. You know, and it's interesting, there was a study that we all saw recently about the vocabulary, which you mentioned earlier. It really doesn't matter about whether somebody's speaking in English, Spanish, Mandarin, German, Russian, whatever. The key is that they're speaking to their children and talking about different things and whatever to enhance the vocabulary because the study showed that once kids get to kindergarten, even if they haven't been in a lot of these other programs, the fact that they've been able to have more vocabulary in any language, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for them to then transfer it where if parents don't talk to their kids and too busy watching TV or doing other things, or some parents just have to work a lot of hours, but mm -hmm. even while they're doing the dishes or cooking, you know, to talk to that one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, and, and, and try and get more vocabulary and stuff. So um, read on Chandler, it's in the early stages of fundraising. Um, you know, what will the funds be used for and, and how can someone contribute, Bob? Well, we've put together a preliminary budget for like a, the first year as a startup for about $60,000, we think, uh, is adequate to, to start the organization up. Uh, and we want to use those funds primarily um, to start uh, developing the metrics, uh, uh, help with the, uh, the, the surveys, and un really understand what the, uh, what the issues are uh, so we can target effectively and, and start to work and develop partnerships with the different organizations. Uh, we also would like to uh, help support the other organizations in helping them attain grants and, and things. So our, our idea is not that we try to raise a lot of money for this organization to, uh, to go do the programs, but to really support the other organizations and provide that kind of coordinating uh, effect uh, with a clear target and a clear accountability. We all can say, well, we're making progress or not. Um, and uh, folks primarily can... Uh, uh, can uh, by contacting Joanne, and I think there'll be some information on Joanne's uh, how to contact her uh, as to how to get involved, how to contribute, how to participate in that. Uh, uh, the city has provided ten thousand uh, uh, dollars potential funding already. Uh, the school district has, has provided five thousand, so there's uh, some initial monies to, to start that effort. And I'd really like to thank the city uh, uh, for providing that to really get us the, the first few months started, so we can go out and. Um, and raise the rest of the money that'll that'll provide the pilot for our first year. And so what are some of the next steps in terms of read on? Well, once our literacy scan is done, the board will take a look at that scan and, and dissect that. Um, we'll analyze the results from that, and then we will undergo a strategic planning process where we'll work with our partners and come up with some strategies um, to use, uh, to turn those statistics around. Um, we really want to identify what the best use of our time is, what the best use of our talent, and what the best use of our treasures are. Um, we want to make sure that what we're doing, it, when we're putting our efforts into it, that it is really making a difference. So we'll start to analyze maybe some of the programs and see to make sure that they are doing what they say they're supposed to be doing. Um, we want to provide that analysis for our partners who may not be um, either have the time or the, the uh, money to be able to do that. So we want to be able to provide that. And we really want to support our partners so that we can dig a little deeper and find those families that are in most need of our services. Cool. You know, we're, we're running out of time for this segment. You mentioned the Bob's three T's, time, treasure, and talent. So when we talk about, it's not just fundraising, it's also about time. We have, we're working with Intel, we're working with different corporations, we're working with the hospital, to that, that time, talent, and treasure. So the treasure obviously is money helps, but having talent in certain things and having the time to be able to go out and, and help some of these kids. So um, we're gonna take a short break right here. I wanna thank you guys both for the first half of the show. So, so. thank you, Rick. You know, it never hurts to look for ways to save money, and you can do it. <laughs> without even trying. Here's a way to help. 
It's that simple. Your tap water can save you money, and it costs only pennies for gallons of pure, clean water. Pure and clean, that's right. Your local water provider is continuously testing and monitoring your tap water, ensuring that it's safe to drink. Tap into quality, quench your thirst, and save money. It's that easy. For more information, visit tapintoquality.com. For those who are just joining us, we're watching Chandler and Focus. I'm Council Member Rick Human. Today we're discussing early literacy efforts through Read on Chandler and the Chandler Library. Members of the Read on Chandler Executive Board just shared their efforts for early literacy development. Now we're going to talk about, again, with Joanne Floth and introduce my next guest, Mary Sager, Downtown Chandler Library Branch Manager. So, Joanne, you already talked about your uh, background, but Mary, you want to talk, tell us a little bit about your background and the library experience and stuff? I was um, a school librarian in New York for several years. I'm um, a certified teacher for elementary school. When I moved out to Chandler, I was first the branch manager of the Basha Library because of my teaching background. And then a few years ago, I came down here to the downtown library where I serve as the branch manager and I'm also involved in the development of our literacy programs. Cool, very cool. So Chandler Libraries are, are a huge supporter of literacy efforts by providing programs and, and resources that are beneficial to everyone. And um, we talked during the break, I'm, I'm a big supporter of libraries. I think it's a real big part of our city that's really important. Yes. You know, how did the partnership, uh, Joanne, with Read on Chandler and the Chandler Library develop? Well, when we first uh, put Read on Chandler together, uh, Brenda Brown from the libraries came and uh, participated in the group. And of course, we recognized how important it was to have the Chandler libraries involved. And Brenda and Mary both have been participants in the, in the activities of Read on Chandler. Um, they, I think, saw the real need that, that we saw in um, how we can use the libraries better to reach out to families and to get that information to families of children zero to five, which is so important at this time. Cool. Mary, how do you see the partnership growing? Well, we have been involved from the very beginning. As Joanne said, the libraries are very busy places, and I think that um, we are an ideal location. Um, we do have people who come to the library, and it's a perfect spot to reach out to people in the community. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the results of the literacy scan and working with Read on Chandler to expand our early literacy efforts in the community. Cool. What are some of the ongoing programs that you guys offer? And are they focused on certain age groups? Are there different programs for different ages? And talk a little bit about that. We offer um, a tremendous amount of programs. Um, we have a variety of early literacy programs, which we call our high five programs for zero to five. Um, for our youngest children, we host regular story times at all four of our branches. At the downtown library, we have a bilingual story time every week. And after each session at all of our libraries, we hand out these high five reading together activity cards and these activity cards are in English and in Spanish, and they contain early literacy tips um, along with book suggestions from our collection. And for the parents and caregivers, we offer regular early literacy workshops called Every Child Ready to Read. Um, other literacy programs include the High Five Play Group. This is um, a group that gives parents the chance to interact with our library professionals in more of a social setting and um, this helps with the development of the cognitive skills of their children. And it also gives them the opportunity to, to meet other people in the community. Um, for preschool and school age children, just recently we've started um, programs focusing on science, technology, engineering, art, and math. STEM. Yes, exactly. Um, because digital, digital literacy is also literacy. So um, we, we want everyone to understand that information is in a variety of formats um, and to use tools such as iPads and computers. So we do offer those STEAM programs. Um, and we also offer for first graders who are having difficulty reading, who are starting to fall behind in their reading, we offer the Read to Succeed program. And um, this is a very special program. We pair these first graders with, um, with trained library volunteers who work as tutors and they meet twice per week at the library. They, um, they work on iPads. Um, the kids think it's a lot of fun and they, they do tremendously. And it's not unusual to see, um, see our kids increase their reading level four or five reading levels by the end of the program. That's awesome, that's awesome. And the big word in this, are these programs cost anything? Oh, everything at the library is always free. Okay, 
And Everything is free. So what does a parent need to do? Just go come down to one of our four branches and get, how hard is it to get a library card? It's not hard to get a library card at all. Um, anyone can come to get a library card. All you need is a photo ID and proof of address. And that's um, proof of address in Maricopa County. And anyone can come. We have four library locations um, throughout the city of Chandler. And um, anyone is welcome, and we hope that everyone comes down. So it's bring a water bill, bring something with your address on it. Anything that has your address, okay. absolutely. And that, that's the big thing. I think people have to understand that we have incredible libraries with great staff. And we've, you know, the council has made it our, one of our, pro, our priorities to make sure the hours of the libraries have never been really cut. Yes. And it's people let people know. And, and I think we're trying to reach the people, not necessarily who use our libraries, we're trying to reach the people who don't use our libraries as well. So um, talk about, you know, you know, Chandler Unified, and we also have Kyrene, is on this modified year-round school. So we have two weeks in October and two weeks at Christmas and long time at summertime. So what are some of the programs that are go goes on during intersessions and go on during the summer for parents? It's very important for children to continue to read over the intersessions. We do see the, um, the summer slide where kids who have worked for, um, for the entire school year on their literacy skills actually do lose ground if they don't continue to read over the summer, especially some of our struggling readers. So we do offer at all four of our libraries um, a variety of programs over the intercession. Uh, we offer the cover to cover um, reading program in the spring in partnership with In-N-Out Burger. We also um, offer our, our biggest program is our summer reading program which goes on during the, um, the summer intercession. Um, this summer, we have um, children, teens, and adults all reading together, working on, um, on gaining incentives, um, reading to gain these incentives, such as toys, um, food coupons, and um, everyone who, um, who finishes the program gets a free book. That's, that's cool. What's the in and out program? Um, the in and out program is actually, um, it's in partnership with in and out Burger. And so they give us these little cards, which we give to the kids. They read a certain number of books, and then they take a certificate back to In-N-Out Burger, and they get a free burger. Cool. It's a great program. Cool. Can adults participate in that one, too? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm proud to know our, our libraries are so engaged with the early literacy programs and stuff. And are there volunteer opportunities? You know, um, how can someone get involved? We talked earlier in the show about time, treasure, and talent. But talk about some of the opportunities for people to get involved in, in the library. The Chandler Public Library has a very active volunteer program. We have opportunities for volunteers to work with the public and also behind the scenes. Um, information on our volunteer program can be found on our website, which is chandlerlibrary.org. There is also a downloadable application that can be printed out and returned to the library. Okay. So, you know, what are the, you, you mentioned the website a little bit, but resources available, finding out more information. What are some of those other, I mean, you mentioned iPads, and we were talking earlier on the break, but the library is different than it was, you know, and I, like I think I mentioned, somebody says, why do we still have libraries? Talk about the libraries in general, so people have an understanding of just some of the different things that are available from, you know, the computers, the videos, all those kinds of things. We have all of that available at the library. Um, we have um, computers that are accessible to anyone with a library card, and our computers are almost always filled with library patrons coming in and using, um, using the computers. We also have free wireless. So anyone who has a device, an iPad, um, a laptop computer can come into any of our libraries and use our wireless completely for free. We have the, the ability to print out any type of document for, um, for a small charge. And um, of course, we also have, um, we have our collection, which is not just books. Um, we have DVDs that can be rented out. Um, up to five DVDs at a time. Um, and there's just a variety of different materials, I think, that, that people don't necessarily expect from the library. But um, I encourage anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to come, in, to come into the library to come in and just see how much it's changed since maybe, you know, years ago when we were in school. You know, all of us had kids, we used to take them all the time to the library. But, right. So talk a little bit about, you know, again, maybe Joanne can touch on a little bit, the importance of utilizing the library in different ways. And Joanne, your expertise of first things first and you know, your school background, how important is it for parents to come down and 
check out books and let the kids play in, in the library and things like that? Well, it's extremely important. As Mary said, there are so many resources available in the library that give parents all kinds of information. Um, I tell parents often to bathe their children in language and reading, um, not drown them, but bathe them in um, a variety of reading, and the libraries provide that. Um, they provide some wonderful programs where uh, parents can come in and actually play with their children um, and have a, a focus of literacy as they're playing. Um, there's just so much to choose from. Anybody that walks in, it's a cool place to be. Um, it's a fun place to be, and it's very warm and inviting, and uh, I encourage anybody to, to come in and try it. Yeah, Mary, one of the things that always comes up is that you know, people hear about digital downloads and things like that, <laughs> and you know, the older generation freaks out about it. Talk a little bit about that for people that you know, need help. I mean, you guys offer services to help people, and you know, Grandma got a Kindle for Christmas, and <laughs> like, what is this, and how do you turn it on kind of thing. Can you talk a little bit about that? We do that all the time. We provide that service for free. Um, we have eBooks that are available to download through, um, through the 3M Cloud. Okay. And um, if anyone has that new Kindle and they would like to know how to do that, all they need to do is come into the library and we would be glad to, to sit down with them and get that set up. We have um, sessions that are dedicated just to this. These are educational sessions on how to download your eBooks. But um, if you just wanted to come in, drop in at any time, and we'll be able to help you with that. We also have pamphlets that we hand out with very clear instructions on how to do that. But quite honestly, it's, it's really not that that difficult. Um, once you do it maybe once or twice, it's it's actually pretty easy. So um, so Grandma wants to take your kid to the library to check out books or whatever. It's, she won't be so afraid of, you know, when the four-year-old pulls out the iPad and knows how to <laughs> use it better than everybody else. So. But I think that's important, though, because people get scared of the technology. And the, the library, the books itself are probably less than we used to have. But how many books now are through your collection through 3M? I mean, how many thousands of books are available? Oh, we've, we're increasing the collection. Uh, we have thousands of books available. This is a new collection for us. Um, we just recently switched over to 3M mm -hmm. last year. Um, and the reason why we did that is because we wanted our collection to be based in, um, in the needs of the Chandler community. So um, we do have books that are specifically tailored to what our Chandler residents want. And if there is anything on there, um, we have... Um, e-books, we have audio books, we have books for children, and we're always taking book suggestions. So since we are building our collection, if any of our customers would like to see books, um, they can certainly make that recommendation to us, and we can pass those along to our collection coordinator and see if it's available in digital format. Cool. We've run out of time, and, and to our audience, first of all, thank you guys for coming, but to our audience, um, literacy and education has been a passion of mine since I've been on council, and help form read on Chandler, but it's so important that our parents realize, and you know, it's it's your job to help get your kids along. It's not so much waiting for them to go to school, but reading with your kids, vocabulary, we have great services, they're free, come use our libraries, you know, contact our organization and stuff to, to really see how you can get your kid ready for kindergarten, which is really important. So I'm Councilmember Rick Eumann, thank you for joining us on Chandler Focus.